Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Aaron Catherine Burke. And I'm Marcus Drew Steele, and you're watching The Index. Today, we're bringing you a very special edition of The Index while we look back at Philip Seymour Hoffman. And for those of you who don't know or don't remember, Philip Seymour Hoffman passed away last Sunday, the Sunday of the Super Bowl, of an apparent drug overdose. NYC police found Philip Seymour Hoffman in his Greenwich Village apartment with a syringe stuck in his arm in his bathroom. And now, while the medical examiner hasn't released an official cause of death, it got the entire blogosphere, media sphere, talking about drug overdose and the use of heroin in America. And it's just sad to see this because he was an awesome actor. And to see so many people go down this road and to just realize that you never know what never could know. be happening or what people could be dealing with, it's tragic. It really is. It's really tragic. And he was just an amazing actor who's the depth of his roles Gosh. just it spans from comedy to intense drama so we're gonna let you guys in on a couple of our favorite Philip Seymour Hoffman moments you want to go first sure awesome what you got so my first pick was a movie that is still really pivotal in my life I love the movie almost famous I was a kid who wasn't cool and while I wasn't a huge music geek, I was a huge film geek, and I wanted to write and direct movies, and watching Almost Famous and watching this kid, you know, being able to live out his dream and write for Rolling Stone was just so awesome. And there's one scene, and it's a phone call between Philip Seymour Hoffman, and just, you guys gotta see it, it's amazing. Yeah, because great art is about uh, guilt and longing and love disguises sex and sex disguises love hey let's face it yeah, you got a big head start i'm glad you were home i'm always home i'm uncool me too you're doing great you know? the only true currency in this bankrupt world is what you share with someone else when you're uncool all right, when it comes to my favorite film, I actually like Philip Seymour Hoffman as the bad guy. And I'm a huge action movie fanatic. Comic books, superheroes, all of that jazz. Count me in. And so my favorite, or one of my favorite Philip Seymour Hoffman moments actually comes from Mission Impossible 3. He was an awesome bad guy in this. He was. Take a look at this. Look at me. Where the hell is it? Look at me. Stay with me. Seven! Seven! I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. I swear to God, I'm gonna kill you. Eight! While I was in film school, one of the classes that I took was a class called Death, Dying in the Cinema. And it was a little morbid, but it was an amazing class. And in the class, we watched the movie Magnolia. And Philip Seymour Hoffman's performance was just amazing. Yeah. I know this sounds silly, and I know that I might sound ridiculous, like this is the, the scene of the movie where the guy's trying to get a hold of the long lost son, you know, but this is that scene. This is that scene. And I think they have those scenes in movies because they're true, you know, because they really happen. And you gotta believe me, this is really happening. Okay, and now while Philip Seymour Hoffman was known as an amazing character actor, Aaron actually reminded me of this movie, and it's Along Came Polly because, I mean, he, he was funny. He, he, had, he had a comedic side to go with it, and when you pair Ben Stiller and Jennifer Aniston with that, you know, you kind of get a certain magic that you don't necessarily get out of some cast. And so, take a look at this one. Let's not bullcrap each other. On paper, Van Loo is one of the riskiest sons of bitches alive. But people, we cannot sum up a man's life with a bunch of numbers on a computer screen. All right, we all need to look into our hearts and go, do I think this dude is going to die in a few years or not? That's a really good one. It's super funny. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and to end with a little story, if we will, about Philip Seymour Hoffman, I worked the Sundance Film Festival for the past four years. and. About two years ago, I went to go have breakfast with my friend Lucy at a diner on Main Street. And I was actually sitting kitty corner to Philip Seymour Hoffman about just one table over. Nice. And, and the funny thing was throughout my entire 
entire lunch, brunch, breakfast, he was looking at me like, I think I know you. And he kept giving me like this inquisitive look, like trying to place me, like, have I worked with you? Where do I know you from? And I'm kind of freaking out. Like Lucy's on this side of me. I'm like, oh my God, Philip Seymour Hoffman keeps staring at me like he knows me. And I'm going back and forth like, should I say something? Should I not say something? I totally wish now that I would have said something. You should have said something. You totally punked out on us. I here. totally <laughs> punked out, but I'm really glad now that I have that moment. And I've always thought to myself, if I ever met Philip Seymour Hoffman, I would have told him that story. And now I won't get the chance, but I'm glad that I have that memory. Well, once again, we were just remembering the life and the body of work that was Philip Seymour Hoffman. And sad, sad, sad story. Sad, sad story. story. And, you know, our hearts go out not only to his fans, but really his friends and family, his partner, his three children, because they're the ones that are, while we're sad that we won't be able to see him on camera anymore, they're the ones that have the real deal. loss. Mm -hmm. Well, to bring a little bit of levity to the show, reporters landed in Sochi a couple days ago and they ran into things that they weren't really expecting. Social media erupted with photos of hotel troubles as the world's media descended onto Sochi. And long lines awaited spectators as they went to collect their event tickets. Though the logistics may not be ideal, the venue landscape looks flawless and people are impressed with the train network. I mean, come on, they had seven years. I don't even know where this starts off for me. There's so much that's just gone wrong from the roads, the streets, the hotels. Why would you wait until the last minute for the biggest stage ever, the Olympics, to, to be rushing around last minute trying to get stuff done? I know, it's just, it's a big mess. And I know that there are a lot of people over in Sochi working really hard to put on these games and I don't want to put them at fault at all. But just the whole thing, it's like, come on guys. I, I don't, I, you have, it's one thing, they already have security problems that they're wanting to worry about and making sure that everything goes, you know, according to plan, making sure that, you know, not only the fans stay safe, but the Olympians stay safe, you know, everybody who's going to be visiting Sochi. But then you hear stories about people taking showers with live wires in their bathrooms. Why is this happening? I don't know. And I... There was a huge snafu, too, about one of the representatives saying that, oh, it's not a big problem. Actually, people, ha we have security footage of people turning on the shower and leaving the room. And then you're like, wait. Hold on. <laughs> you have cameras in the showers? In hotel rooms? <laughs> Rewind here a little bit. Forget, forget that you're trying to prove something. You have cameras in the showers. <laughs> what? <laughs> Well, I'm for one glad that I'm going to be watching the Olympics from the comfort of my couch with no cameras. And not in the shower. No. <laughs> well, thanks for watching. I'm Marcus Drew Steele. And I'm Erin Catherine Burke. But before you guys go, don't forget to follow us on Facebook by liking our page. Follow us on Twitter, Marcus D. Steele and Erin K. Burke. And also be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Index. And please share with us what performances you liked best of Philip Seymour Hoffman. We'd love to hear. Yes. Thanks for watching. See you guys later. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.